<sighs> it's early. It's early. It's four thirty. Had a thought on my mind, and it's been on my mind. Been walking through. <sighs> Book of Job and John there Sunday he brought out he brought out how the redemption or the redeemer is shown forth in the book the resurrection is shown forth Righteousness is shown forth. <clears throat> that stirred up my mind to look at the whole book in the light of the amazing grace of an almighty God. <clears throat> I, I want to go this way with it. We was back in 2018. Uh, me and John, we went over to Snow Hill to pick up some books. <clears throat> we swung by and saw Elder Poole. He was living with his daughter at the time. And we walked in to visit and I just kind of sat off to the side and listened. <clears throat> and Jim and John were talking. And <clears throat> John, in the course of the conversation, he asked Jim how he was doing. And Elder Poole said something that, and that this has been spoken of multiple times in this little body here. <sighs> Jim said, John, I didn't know an old man like this could be so vile. Well, that, that got John's eyes to weaken. And that has stuck with this little body for ever since then. I said we spoke of it several times. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> we we have articles. We have messages from the older elders and they have their place. But the one thing that these elders and writers of old and that was proof to us right there that the last thing <clears throat> that they would want would be to sit up on a pedestal or held as spiritual leaders. <clears throat> That's the last thing that they would want. <clears throat> there was other things said in the conversation, but <clears throat> to come to my <clears throat> what I'm looking at I, I when, when this when this doctrine of grace crossed my mind I remembered a little short article that Elder Poole had penned He had related a story of he was down south and <clears throat> many years ago. And 
and they were at a a meeting and two or three of them had got up and spoke on the doctrine of grace and one of the older elders at the time that was in that <clears throat> circle there had chastised them for speaking on that beautiful doctrine and they and they and and they left well in this short article the wonderful thing about this particular article Elder Poole didn't go about explaining what grace was he simply gave a short list of scriptures concerning grace And grace, if you put, <clears throat> if you hung a meaning around it, around its neck, it would be unmerited favor. He just simply wrote down several articles. He didn't put no explanation to them. <laughs> because <clears throat> without spiritual discernment, it'll just be words tied together. That's all it would be. But if the spirit is kind, <clears throat> we can read these few scriptures. <clears throat> the first one that he penned, <clears throat> that he, <clears throat> no, nah, he didn't pen them, but he wrote them down. You know, speaking of that, Here was Peter on a rooftop, <clears throat> shown a vision. At the exact same time, there's a man over there, there named named Cornelius. Them fellas who didn't know each other. It was the spirit of the Almighty God. By our Lord's over there showing Peter a vision. He's over there. He'd already dealt with Cornelius. Spirit of the Almighty God was already there. There had already there had already been a work done. <clears throat> he was dealing with Cornelius and his little family, that little body there, and he was dealing with Peter. He was going to show Peter something. That's the work of the hand of an almighty God. <clears throat> Here's Peter up there on the roof. And there's already guys been sent to get him. Peter walks into Cornelius' house. And, well, <clears throat> well, he drops down, bows to him. Uh, Cornelius does. What does Peter say? Stand up. <clears throat> I'm made of the clay too. And that's exactly what Elihu said. I'm made out of clay just like you are. It's the spirit of the almighty God. Like John said Sunday. <clears throat> this discernment comes from afar. <clears throat> It isn't coming from me. Daniel told Nebuchadnezzar that. And in like manner, when Elder Poole wrote down these few verses on the uh, beautiful, amazing doctrine 
of grace, which is what Job was about. It showed every one of the beautiful doctrines of God. But it was grace. It was unmerited favor. The first one that <clears throat> listed is Romans 3. And 24. But you got to back up a little bit. He starts off, now we know, verse 19. Now we know. Why? Because we've been shown. That's the only way that anybody's ever going to know. <clears throat> That whatsoever things the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law. That every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, because of that right there, by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. And Eliphaz said, if, you, if all you have to do is prepare your heart, <clears throat> for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith, and that, fa and that is the faith not in Jesus Christ, but that faith that is of God. Jesus Christ, unto all, unto all, and upon all them that believe. <clears throat> that means all them that have been made alive. That's not all. <clears throat> Just those that are have been made alive. The light of the knowledge, where there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, all have sinned, and that right there, that all is all-encompassing, being justified freely. That's the amazing grace. That's unmerited favor. Being justified freely by His grace, and then now, he tells you how, and that's what Job said. <clears throat> he, he was shown that my Redeemer liveth through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And when, it's, and when it is listed as Christ Jesus, it is he who was resurrected. <clears throat> and, when, and when you see Jesus, it is he who suffered. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation <clears throat> through faith in his blood. And that blood right there is that precious blood that Peter speaks of. To declare his righteousness <clears throat> for the remission of sin. That is the propitiation <clears throat> he was set forth for, for sacrifice. If you go over here to Hebrews 10, it will tell you about that. <clears throat> In burnt sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. No pleasure. <clears throat> then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. For what? To do thy will, O will, will, oh God, when he prayed in the garden. <clears throat> Not my will, but thy will. Above, when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, <clears throat> thou wouldest not, neither has, neither had his pleasure in those which are offered by the law. 
Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, and that covenant of law, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified, set apart. Job was set apart through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. And when you see Jesus first is pointing to is pointing to he that suffered, bled, offered himself up, but then when Christ is it is next, it is pointing to the resurrection. Once and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same the the uh, same sacrifice which can never and it says never take away sins. But oh, this man right here, what does it say back here? Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who is the propitiation, the sacrifice. <clears throat> For who? <clears throat> For those that have been made alive. <clears throat> But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice, one for sins forever. <clears throat> How long is that? How long is forever? Sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. <clears throat> Whereof the Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit, also is a witness to us. The Spirit of the Almighty God, that discernment. <clears throat> I couldn't find this verse the other day. Sunday. I knew I knew right I knew it right where it was. <clears throat> For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of what? Of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, that spirit of truth. That our Lord said he will guide you. He will not speak of himself. He will guide you. For we have this treasure. Oh, what a treasure it is. Oh, it, it is a treasure. But where is that treasure? He tells you. That's what Peter told Cornelius. I'm a man just like you. Stand up. Elihu said, I'm made of the clay just like you are. <clears throat> but the spirit of the almighty God guides, and that is this, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He, Jesus Christ, him who suffered, bled, died, offered himself up, commended his spirit, <laughs> into the hands of the Father, <clears throat> the Father raising him up. That is the faith of Jesus right there. And the light of the knowledge is the treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. That's that beautiful light of knowledge right there. That the power is the power is of God, and it is not of us. It is not of us. Lo, in the volume of the book, it is written of our Lord and our Savior, <clears throat> and that <clears throat> and that book. Being penned, that is a hard shout, <clears throat> and, it, and it can come to pass no other way. 
And when and when that and when you are shown that, what a blessing and a comfort. <clears throat> what well, what a blessing and a comfort to a little child of God. <clears throat> Whom hath set for to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. And when Peter says I meant to make it through several of those, but I'm I'm not I'm not going to. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. First chapter of Peter, first Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy mercy has begotten us again unto a lively, a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he who suffered, offered himself up and <clears throat> by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that's incorruptible, it's undefiled, and that fadeth not away to be give the light to be shown that light right there <clears throat> reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. That's the first one. <clears throat> That that uh, that elder pool list. <clears throat> when John asked him, he asked him, "How are you doing?" Elder pool said, "John, I didn't know an old man like this could be so vile." There's a massive sermon, a massive message <clears throat> of un. Merited favor being shown the amazing grace of an almighty God right there. Thank you.